curious about the connection between aphids and milk? Stay right here and you'll learn the answer to this secret of Mother Nature's. I'm Madeline and I love to plant native plants. On this channel, you'll learn all about growing native plants in your state. Before we talk about Missouri native flowers, I bet you're wondering, why do native plants matter? Here are four reasons they matter. Go check out my video titled, Native Plants versus Global Warming. For more details about why you should plant native plants. And stick to the end of this video to learn how to find even more of the best native plants for your area. So, Missouri is our state today. It's the sixth state video that I'm recording. Let me grab the map here. And where are we, Missouri? We're, you know, these were picked with certain criteria having to do with keywords, but I will tell you that they're all over on the eastern coast. So I don't know, are we more interested in planting native plants over here? There's Missouri, and you got a yellow butterfly because one of the flowers is yellow. The first flower that I found through research as being very good for Missouri, it's named Pearly Everlasting. Scientific name is Anaphallus margaritatia, and it belongs to the aster family. But to me, it looks nothing like an aster. Pearly Everlasting has about 12 other names, but we're just gonna call it Pearly Everlasting. Pearly Everlasting is a perennial. It's classified as an herb. Pearly Everlasting grows from one to three feet tall. Pearly Everlasting's little flowers are very small and they're kind of clustered together on top and they're cottony looking. They have a pearl white appearance, thus the name. You can use these in your flower arrangement because they're really good in a dried flower bouquet. This flower actually has one butterfly that uses it, and that is the Painted Lady Butterfly. I don't mean to say that that's the only butterfly that'll come to the flowers. There's others that will. There's two that use this as a larval host for their caterpillars, the Painted Lady and those little fast skippers, they're called, butterflies. Let's talk about where it likes to grow. It likes dry prairies, open fields. It likes full sun to part shade and dry, sandy, maybe gravelly soils even. So you might see it growing in a kind of a not great place alongside a road and gravel or whatever. Folk medicine use for pearly everlasting is, is uh, make it into a salve for burns. I found out through my research. If you want more pearly everlasting in your garden, you can divide it in the spring. You can also just locate seeds through some of the sources that I'm giving you and grow new ones every year. And it, it does say that it's perennial. Before we move on to the second plant, like and subscribe to catch more of my native gardening videos. We're down to the number two flower for Missouri native flower known as swamp milkweed. The scientific name for swamp milkweed is Asclepius incarnata. This milkweed plant can grow up to five feet tall. It's very showy, it has pretty pink flowers, clusters of them on the top. If you buy this in a plant nursery, there are some varieties, variants that are white. This one is a deep rose pink, but there'll be variations in color. Make sure it's the native incarnata. Okay, the light requirements for Asclepius incarnata, full sun to part shade. And I think you can probably guess from the name swamp milkweed that it likes a lot of water or moisture. It can even be grown in a pond, according to one of my sources. Beside a pond, it likes it mucky. So if you have a nice mucky area that's driving you crazy, this one needs to go there. Swamp milkweed will also just grow in average garden soil, but you may have to water it according to my sources. So yeah, you can always experiment. <laughs> so these flowers are going to attract hummingbirds and butterflies. And uh, one of my sources said that this really wonderful milkweed plant is underutilized in gardens. Back to the start of this video, 
swamp milkweed will get aphids. However, unless the plant starts to look sickly, then get a spray bottle, put some water in it, add a little dish soap, shake it up, spray the heck out of the aphids with it. You can also just hit it with a strong blast of water from your hose if you support the plant with your other hand. You don't want to knock it over or break it. But anyway, dish soapy water is a very safe remedy. You may not get rid of all the aphids, but you'll get rid of enough that it'll start to bounce back. Just depends how often you want to hit those aphids. This is a great plant to use in a wetland habitat or just a native habitat. I love that in my research I found it's highly deer resistant. All parts of the plant are toxic if eaten by humans. Please don't eat these or even make medicine out of it as people used to do in the past. But it's a larval host for uh, the monarch and another butterfly, the queen butterfly. This milkweed flower is also especially beneficial to bees, native and specialized bees, honeybees also, which are not native, but we like them. The flowers are also fragrant, which is a lovely uh, bonus. And looking over my notes, I did find that you can cook this and make it non-toxic, but definitely do your research on that first. If you want to grow more, you can plant seeds you can collect them from your existing plants from their kind of cool pods that all the milkweeds have. Collect them from the pods in October or November. Hi, these videos on native plants for your state are sponsored by Wire and Fire Jewelry. Last but not least is plant number three. And it has some different common names, partridge pea, Sensitive plant. Are you ready for the scientific name? Chemichrysta fasciculata. <laughs> this cute little guy in this picture is actually a partridge pea from my hell strip garden right next to the street. I threw out some native flower seeds, just scattered them around in bare places in that area. And in the last few weeks, I've noticed a yellow flowering plant with little tiny fern-like leaves and that's what it is. I identified it. It's very easy to grow from seed but I did also find that you can divide an established plant in the spring. The partridge pea sensitive plant or sleeping plant has small yellow flowers. It is an annual plant so you'll need to reseed it every year it does grow from one to three feet tall, and it's a very slender little plant. It would be good winding in amongst some other plants. You don't want it just standing all by itself. As it's, unless it's a bunch of them, it's not going to be super visible. Mine started blooming probably very early July here in Oklahoma. So in Missouri, I would guess it would be similar. The flowers will attract butterflies and bees. The seed pods are eaten by game birds and songbirds. The deer also like to browse on the plant. The reason this is called sensitive plant is because the leaves will fold in protectively if you touch them. I remember doing that as a child and being amazed when my mother showed me that plant. It doesn't need a lot of water because the plant I have is right by the street in a hell strip garden. This really cute plant will grow in sun part shade. It'll like dry soil, moist soil, clay soil, sandy soil, well drained soil, you name it. I listed everything here when I was doing the research. It'll grow just about any place. Ants will also gather the nectar from these flowers. It is a host larval plant for three different butterflies at least. The cloudless giant sulfur, which is a yellow one, the orange sulfur, and I love this name, the Sleepy Orange. Comment below with your state. And I'll release a video soon on native flowers for your area. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified as I release videos for every U.S. state on the best native plants. Plus, you can get step-by-step -step help today to find your best native plants by downloading my free 
how to find the best native plants in your area right here. Thanks for watching.